Welcome to the party, pal. Your friendly neighborhood master chaos back with you with a very quick update. Criterion Collection has just announced the essential Fellini Collection, and frankly, I'm on cloud nine, and I had to bring you this news immediately. They write, 100 years after his birth, Federico Fellini still stands apart as a giant of the cinema. The Italian maestro is defined by his dualities, the sacred and the profane, the masculine and the feminine, the provincial and the urbane. He began his career working in the slice-of-life poetry of neorealism, and though he soon spun off on his own free-wheeling creative axis, he never lost that ground grounding evoking his dreams. Uh, he never lost that grounding evoking his dreams, memories, and obsessions on increasingly grand scales in increasingly grand productions teeming with carnivalesque imagery and flights of phantasmagoric surrealism while maintaining an earthy, embodied connection to humanity. Bringing together 14 of the director's greatest spectacles, all beautifully restored, this centenary box set is a monument to an artist who conjured a cinematic universe all his own, a vision of the world as a three-ring circus in which his innermost infatuations, fears, and fantasies take center stage. The box is available November 24th, 2020. So that's right around the corner. I am so excited. And actually, if there is a Black Friday deal at Barnes & Nobles, then this will be eligible. $200 for 15 discs. Here are the movies. First of all, let's take a look at this box set. Look at how beautiful that is. It comes in this gorgeous, almost Halloween colored box set, orange and black. I love the uh, diamond shapes there along the uh, spines. Uh, Essential Fellini that's there with his megaphone. Looks like you get a lovely booklet, the guide to the films, and then... Incidentally, if you're new here, my name is Master Chaos, and I have daily videos focusing on film, the cinema life, filmmaking in general, and boutique label releases. So I hope you consider subscribing and stick around, because the party's just getting started. Let's see what we have here. We've got variety lights from 1955. I won't read every bit of description here. Uh, I will just sort of give my impressions of the films if I know them. Uh, if you want to read more, I will include the link so you can read the descriptions of the individual films. Variety Lights, I don't know it, but I'd love to watch it. That's from 1950, I believe. Yeah, 1950. Then The White Sheik, 1952. I don't know that one either. Looks very interesting. I Vitelloni, I know this one. Uh, it's, I don't remember it too well. I think this is the one that's about his childhood. Uh, and La Strada, this is my favorite film of his. Beautiful movie, Giulietta Messina is amazing. That was his wife, and she starred in a ton of his films. La Strada is a phenomenal movie, and it always leaves me empty in in, in a wonderful way. It's just really, it's, it's, if you haven't seen La Strada, I highly recommend you start there. Beautiful movie, that's from 1954. El Bidone? I don't know El Bidone. Oh, Knights of Kiberia. I hope they include Knights of Kiberia, because that's my second favorite. That's also with Juliette Messina. El Bidone is a dark, near-realist crime drama starring Broderick Crawford. Oh, okay. Awesome. I'm in. Knights of Kiberia, yes. Uh, oh, by the way. 1955, El Bidone. Knights of Kiberia, 1957. In the fifth of their immortal collaborations, Federico, Federico Fellini and the exquisitely impress expressive... Julieta Messina completed the creation of one of the most indelible characters in all of cinema, Kabiria. She's a sex worker slash prostitute, and uh, it's such a wonderful movie. Uh, she's so good in this. Julieta Messina is so good. I didn't know they did, they did five movies together. That's amazing. I hope they include all of them. And then La Dolce Vita, of course, 1960. Uh, Marcello Mastriani's in this one. Everyone knows La Dolce Vita. I don't have to go into it. Eight and a Half is another one. Everyone knows, and I don't have La Dolce Vita or Eight and a Half on Blu-ray, so I'm. This is a slam dunk for me as well. Oh, Juliet and the Spirits. This is a, another Juliet the Messina movie. I've seen this. I don't remember it too well, to be honest. Fellini's Satyricon. This one I don't know very well. I think I have seen it. An episodic barrage of sexual licentiousness, godless violence, and eye-catching grotesquerie. Uh, it follows the exploits of two pansexual young men. Uh, it's probably not going to be my favorite, but uh, but it says here, creating apparent chaos with exquisite control, Fellini constructs a weird old world that feels like science fiction. Interesting. 
I I watch it. I watch it. I'm filming something. Can you give me a second? I, I'm I'm recording audio. So can you go away for a little bit? I'll be on in a second. Next we have Roma from 1972. This is a travel log memoir, and uh, it takes a look at the city in general. I, if I'm Remember this correctly, it's, it feels very much like an anthology. That there's no one real story, but there's some amazing shots in this film. Um, just gorgeous imagery in this movie that feels like uh, it was shot almost in a dream. Uh, it really makes Rome look phenomenal. So I highly recommend Roma as well. Amacord, everyone knows Amacord as well. This is one of his most famous films. This is the winner of Fellini's fourth Academy Award for Best Foreign Language film this is another one of his childhood films at least when he you know remembers his childhood and the ship sails on this one i don't know from 1983 i like that dude's hair uh, motley crib european aristocrats and a lovesick rhino board a luxurious ocean liner on the eve of world war one to scatter the ashes of a beloved diva okay interesting seems like that might be like a fun you know theatrical uh, Three Ring Circus, to use their term, on a boat. In Tervista, 1987. If you don't know this one, it seems like a something of a late career companion to Eight and a Half. Federico Fellini's penultimate film is a similarly self-reflexive and self-deprecating journey through both the director's dream life and his cinematic world. Oh, beautiful. Uh, a Japanese camera crew follows Fellini on tour through his longtime home of Studio Chinichita as the maestro's memories and fantasies unfurl. Oh, that's going to be great. I'd love to see that. Uh, Marcello Mastriani and Anita Ekberg also appear. And, and that'll do. That is The Essential Films, available November 24th of this year. Criterion Collection. Guys, I would jump on this. Film fans, this is the perfect, perfect thing to add to your Black Friday shopping list or your holiday buying gift giving guide. Essential for Federico Fellini set coming out November 24th from Criterion. Thank you very much, Criterion. Until we meet again, I wish you a very pleasant afternoon wherever you are.